I love this movie, and I think what really touched me is the fact that you make something that talks about death, talks about a very serious subject that's so beautiful and so approachable, and, and almost it makes it easier for parents to talk to their kids about it. Was that part of the story? Is that part of the culture? Absolutely. Uh, Day of the Dead is a very ancient tradition, but it's, it's, it's very much rooted in bringing a family together and celebrating life. It's about life. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's this concept that as long as we tell the stories of those who came before us, as long as we sing their songs, as long as we cook their favorite dishes, tell their jokes, they're here, they're here with us. They'll be alive. But the thing is, the curious thing is, Day of the Dead is about the carpe diem, like seize the day with mariachis, you know? It's like, you're alive, celebrate that, and celebrate the lives that came before you. It's incredibly emotional and vital. And I think the the idea of implanting that music and, and, and making it so vibrant and so full of life really brings that message in. I mean, there's yeah. a lot. The music is so fantastic. Fantastic. Well, Gustavo Santolaya and Paul Williams wrote two original songs, and then the rest are covers of all sort of the soundtrack, the but, playlist of my life. But incredibly well produced. Yeah, yeah. And you... I love the fact that you have that little piece of Edward Sharp home. Yeah. I don't know if I, I, I may be the only one that noticed that, but I noticed that it, at the it's, end. It's hidden in there. It's really hidden, but I got so excited. And we had little kids singing it, and it's, it's sort of Gustavo's version of it. And to me, that was it. You're home. You've, we, you know, again, we took a song that came from the U.S., and we made it into a Mexican version of it. Yes. What are you most proud of the, with completing the story? What what really? Well, I mean, it, besides it, working it, with this awesome it took, man, <laughs> it took 14 years to make, so I'm really overwhelmed. My heart is yes. ready to burst from the. I, I could not be more proud, and to be able to show it to my son, I mean, that's that's been the biggest thing, and, and to my father, honestly, uh, it's been it's been quite the journey. But I, I feel like a thousand birthday parties for me have happened now. This is all, <laughs> all, the, all, all at the same time. All at the same time. What about you? I mean, what, this must be so amazing for you to find this. It is really great because, you know, when, when you produce, I, I try to specialize on first-time directors, and I say no to a lot of things. Uh, every time I embark with a new director is because I think he's worth it. And I haven't been wrong often. Yeah. Often I'm right. You know, sometimes your partnership is, uh, you know, deep, deep, deep. Sometimes it's just protecting. With Jorge, it was all. It was very deep. It was very personal. I cared for his health. I cared yeah. for his uh, sanity. I cared for the purity of the project. And we went through six years of no, 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 no together. And, and, and I said to Jorge at, at one point, look, the good news is you're not making the movie for the right reasons. So as long as we keep not making it for the wrong reasons, uh, you know, if, if, if we ever make it, it needs to be the right movie. And finally, after many years of real effects patiently supporting us, Fox came in and we knew yeah. instantly, you know, G Jim Danopoulos is a Greek. Greek. <laughs> so he instantly connected with the visceral emotional center of the movie because when people say what are we going to get out of book of life you're going to get life yeah. you're going to get each other because it's a movie that unless you're made of stone it's incredibly emotional and it's genuine it's not a calculated marketing project it took us enormous amounts of time and effort to make it it's completely from the heart and it's going to touch you heart to heart yeah, I didn't get the feeling that you were selling a product. No. It was never felt that way. We are, we are uh, earnest about it, and we went through hell for it. Yeah, we say the new, the new punk rock is being earnest and yeah. being truthful. And, and sincere, yeah. And sincere. Yeah. These wonderful characters, I mean, how did they, how, how, it just must be so satisfying to see them on the screen. It's, I love these characters. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I love them too. It was definitely... You know, a lot of them are based on people I know. You know, Maria is based on my wife. Um, Manolo is kind of what I aspired to when I was younger, and and also based on my father. Uh, Cibarba is my grandfather, who's very, <laughs> very, uh, very much of a trickster. Uh, so all these, you know, it's funny in Mexico they ask me, "Is this film a feminist movie?" And I said, "Well, if feminism means men and women are equal, then yeah, absolutely." It's a humanist. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a, and all the women in in my life, my mother, my sister, my wife. They are the pillars of my family, so that's why the women in the movie are so strong. Yes. Nice. What now? I, I I do have to ask. 
When are we seeing Hellboy, man? <laughs> I, 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 I <laughs> Con- consider Shival the Hellboy 3. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that was Hellboy like two and a half. Right? <laughs> no, I like that. That well, works. You, you know what, what? 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 we love about putting Ron there is we knew he would bring the charm, the swagger, the madness that Ron always brings to stuff. But you know, the Hellboy question I asked at Comic Con, I'm waiting for an answer. Yeah, no, yeah. we are. T- I think I fully support you, man. Let's keep do pressing. it when we when you want to do it. And Let's we keep can't pressing do it. until we get it. Yeah. Done. Okay. Yeah.